Cruel Boys tier list. All the units that we might realistically play in the Cruel Boys army ranked by tier. My name's Moss, welcome to another video. So let me define what I mean by in my tiers. So S tier is going to be an auto include. We're pretty much going to play this unit in every single list that we make. A tier is going to is a solid unit that we will most likely run in almost any list but might not but might lose out to other A tier units. But this is a unit that brings a lot to the table that is that is that is just great. B tier is going to be our consistently good uh, unit. Sorry. B tier is our situationally good unit. This is a unit that's going to uh, provide something that we might need depending on the meta or the season. C tier is just like a bad unit. Uh, maybe you want to play it like there might be a, it ha might have a very specific kind of niche that maybe maybe you'll put it on the table, but realistically it needs significant changes and reworks before it it will be played. And then F tier is just bad. F tier is just bad, like unplayably bad. So at first we have gut rippers. So I would love to put gut rippers in the F tier because of how terrible they are as a unit. Uh, our battle line options in this army are quite poor, but we have to play them. We have to play them. So um, the problem with the problem with gut rippers is, is that they have to come in a unit of ten, which makes their wicked sticker a lot better than their wicked hacker, so they they can fight in two ranks. But with a four four zero one attack profile, it's just they're they're quite weak. Um, you know, with a whole unit, that you're going to get 21, 21 dice, so you're going to be able to get some Venom Encrusted Weapon hits, but probably not enough. Uh, they have a 5-up save, so they're they're all just dying. They have a 5 Bravery, so those that don't die will run. They just they just melt. Um, I To talk more about this, check out my How to Improve the Cruel Boys video. I made a C tier almost exclusively for gut rippers because I would love them to be F tier, but they can't be F tier. Up next we got our Hobgrots. I love Hobgrots. I'm really happy that they decided to put, uh, that you can include one as battle line in this army. If you could include, like, Hobgrots as battle line, that's all I would ever run. If you told me I had to run two units of Hobgrots to fill one battle line slot, I would run six units of Hobgrots. They're mobile, because they can run and shoot. Uh, they're, they fit thematically what this army wants to be. They're just like a bunch of idiots running around the battlefield throwing their scrap grenades, and they don't want to engage in hand-to-hand -hand combat. They want to run away from you. So that's pretty cool. I really like Hobgrots. I put them as A tier. You're going to pretty much include them in every list that you build. They have a lot of utility. They really help. They, they're great screens, 10 bodies, 80 points. Love it. Uh, Rogue Idols. Surprisingly, in this army can be situationally quite good. This army lacks anvils, it lacks anything that can actually survive a round of combat, but the rogue idol can do that. It sits with 16 wounds, it has a 4-up save, and a 5-up ward, so it's going to be able to tank uh, pretty, pretty... It's going to be able to survive a round of combat. The only big problem that it has is because it's not a cruel boy auric, it doesn't get venom encrusted weapons, so that's unfortunate. Um, and, uh, like, it, it can get pretty weak on its damage table, so it can be unreliable to be one of the Cruel Boy Wah pieces, but overall, like, like I said, like, it can, it can sort of be a tar pit against, like, Iron Jaws, for example, so, solid, B tier. Marsh Crawler Slogoth is, I think, unplayable in this army. There's a lot of problems with this, with this model. Uh, he doesn't get Venom Encrusted Weapons, which means his bad... His pretty weak attack profile uh, gets even weaker because he's not just going to get that, that little bit of damage, right? Like, in, in addition to like anything else that happens to get through. Um, his crew drummer ability doesn't really help us that much in this army because our battle line doesn't care about getting plus one to hit, right? Our hobgrods don't want to fight, and our gut rippers, um, they rely on venom encrusted weapons, right? Getting one additional to hit. With a so it becomes a three four zero one attack profile. It's it's just nothing's getting through without venom encrusted weapons. So if it added uh, plus one to the attack characteristic, that would be amazing. If it added even if it added something like anyway, you should check out the how to improve cruel boys video because I love this sculpt. I love this model. 
Uh, I, I, I love parts of it. I love how many wounds it has. I love... Uh, it doesn't have a... a, like a, a, a it doesn't degrade as it loses its hit points or as it loses, you know, wounds. But I, unfortunately, I just think this model is absolutely unplayable. Bolt Boys, S tier. We're going to include this in every single list that we make. It is the primary source of our damage. Ranged attacks. It's exactly what we want this, this army to be doing. We want to be picking off things. I love everything about it. Absolutely great. Killabo, F tier. Uh, unplayable. Unplayable. Um, in, in this army. Uh, some of the biggest problems that it has is that it only has one attack. So even with its aim shot, its aim shot has a 2-3-2 uh, and then X like a uh, for its attack profile. So 2 to hit, 3 to wound. It's not a hero, so you can't use their finest hour. There's no way to give it plus 1 to wound. So you're going to roll that one dice and 1 in 6 is not going to hit, right? 1 in 3 is not going to wound. And then they're going to save. It's like you're not getting through with this with this model. You're, you're just not going to do anything. If it was 80 points, I might consider, but no, it's just not going to do it. Also, it, with its damage profile, it does 2 damage plus um, you roll a number of dice equal to the wounds characteristic of the target, and for every 5 up, you add a damage. So this means if the model has 12 wounds, we're going to average out at about 6 damage. So, like, you know, if you do happen to get the attack through, it'll deal some decent damage to a big target. But it's if you're not shooting a big target, it's not even going to do really any any damage. Like, what if you're attacking a two wound battle line unit? It's going to deal two damage. It's going to deal two damage. You're spending a hundred points on this model to deal two damage. If the attack gets through, it's just it's just quite weak. Um, so now we got kill the boss on foot. So here's with the stab grot. I have a hard time placing this model. I want to put it in A tier because I think it's like I think it's a solid, solid model, but I don't think it's it's going to do it. I think it's going to sit at a B tier. I, I would say it's situationally good depending on the meta and depending on the season. So right now with foot heroes being good, I think the kill a boss is better in the current uh that's 2022 2023 season two meta right galatian champions i think he's better right now so i would say he's situationally good but considering 30 points more gets us a nash tooth like i i i don't i can't uh i can't see him being an a tier i mean for 30 points more with the nash tooth you're getting a better attack profile you have the addition of the Bone Crushing Fangs, which is actually a, a pretty decent attack profile. He gets plus one to hit on the charge, and uh, he doesn't get the You Hold Him Off ability, but that's not a very super strong ability anyway. Um, you know, the Mount doesn't get the Venom Crusted Weapons, but it has it has two Rend. So, I mean, the Nash Tooth, I put out an A tier. Like, I think that he is quite a bit better for 30 points quite a bit better for 30 points speaking of a tier i also put the break a boss or uh on the mire on the trogoth uh in an a tier solid damage brings lots to the table he's quite slow but his yank a chain ability combined with regeneration is is a nice synergy that works nicely together i i hope that they change this so that he doesn't have to roll he just heals d3 like they did with the gloom spike gets that would be cool but solid unit a tier lots of damage lots of fun i love pulling that yank a chain and dealing those d3 mortals and looking at my opponent and say oh yeah like i have 10 attacks uh at three th you know because he's a hero you can also give him all out or um uh, their finest hour so with all out attack it's like oh yeah so i have 10 dice with two to hit th two, two to wound two rend and three damage so you know uh sorry here's my potential 30 damage rolling at you uh, so that's really great. I love this model. He was the first model I bought as an individual model just because I love the sculpt and I love uh, the War Scroll, everything about him. Uh, Merc Knob on Belchabana. His ability, uh, the fact that he can, you know, prevent, um, uh, what is it, on a 5-up, ignore the effects of spells or endless spells. 
So that can be pretty cool. You know, it's a 12, it's a 12 inch aura. So if that's what you're playing against, you know, like it, it's pretty good. Uh, there's spells that can get around us being invisible outside of 12 inches, like the Slon's Comet Call. So if that's if there's a lot of that going on at your store, you know, you can plant this in the middle of your castle, and at least there's a one in three chance that you're going to ignore uh, the effects, like the damage from those spells. That's pretty cool. His other ability, Breath of the Mire Drake. Um, you know, he has to be he has to be in combat. He has to be within three inches, and then you know you're going to deal like one mortal wound. Uh, are you know so one mortal wound doesn't really have a high impact right um, and best it's going to be d3 mortal wounds so I mean he's cheap at 80 points and I think that's why he's situationally good but really it's for the power of Kragnos ability I would love this model to go up in points and his breath of the Meyer Drake ability be improved but again check out my how to improve cruel boys video Swamp Call a Shaman, obviously is an S tier. We're gonna include him in every single list that we make. At least one, but probably more like two, sometimes three. Everything about him is good. His poisons and elixir ability is really strong. Summit Boggy Mist is a great spell. The fact that he can use both poison and elixirs and cast a spell is great. Um, yeah, I mean, everything about him is is absolutely great. Great spells, great um, uh, spell lore, all that uh, S tier. Uh, Manok. Dekunin uh, is a named hero, um, and I don't think he's strong at all. I don't like really anything about him. I don't like his crew. This list or this army really is hero heavy, so we're always we're always competing for who's going to make those hero slots. And this guy just doesn't do it. He doesn't really offer enough. You know his his. Um, Venom Encrusted Weapon is on a 5-up, so, like, I don't know, I just, there's nothing, you get an extra dirty trick, but dirty tricks are relatively low impact in this army, so I, I there's just, I just don't feel like there's anything about him that uh, really is great, I would put him at a C tier, I don't think he's unplayably bad, not like these two uh, in the F tier, but I think that it's like he, you know, if you wanted to play a fun just a for fun game, you know, you could have him be the sixth hero. You know, you got your three Cruel Boy Wasp pieces, you got two Swamp Kalas, and you could throw him in as the last uh, model, just for fun, but not very strong at all. Now we're on to the Behemoths, Gobsprack. Gobsprack, ugh, I wish this model was better. I wish Gobsprack was better. I would love for him to be an S tier, but he's just not. I think that he could, ugh. I mean, I don't even know. Is he situationally good? Like, is he B tier? Is he a B tier hero in our army? Like, probably B tier. I think he would be situationally good if you need a couple extra unbinds. I think he's situationally good if your opponent has little wizards that would, like, having that, that little bit of damage go through would be good. The fact that he can unbind with 3d6 once per turn is nice. That's, like, almost like a guaranteed unbind and if you're if a backline wizard has taken some damage and you're within unbind range you know you can like be like haha i'm gonna unbind you and then you uh lose lose uh, the last little bit of your life right um but, i mean so on a 10 plus it's d6 mortal wounds with the unbind so if you're using the screaming mandrake the probability of that goes quite a bit up but without any he doesn't have any buffs for anybody you know, he doesn't buff the people around him, which is unfortunate. Uh, his 6-up ward is relatively low impact, considering how low his, you know, his he has a 5-up save. He has a lot, of, a lot of wounds, 14 wounds, but, you know, even his signature spell, like, he has Summon Boggy Mist. I feel like he should have a... a, a anyway, check out my How to Improve Crew Boys video. It's really hard to talk about these units without saying what I would make different about them. Break Killaboss on Vulture, S tier, auto-include. He's my general every single time. Uh, his uh, uh, having a command or having a command traits and mount traits and everything on him really lets you customize him how you want. He's cheap at 220 points. Um, absolutely great. Love this. Love this model to death. Oops. Uh, auto include in my opinion, for sure. Same thing. I only put Snatch a Boss here. I didn't put uh, the named version Swamp Boss Scumjack. The reason is because. He, so it's the Swamp Snatch of Bosses. Uh, swamp Boss Scumdrack is just, a, in my view, a strict improvement. I love the bet 
being able to get an inspired uh, for the watt turn is awesome. Uh, great flavorful model. He slaps. He's he's great. Absolutely great. I'm going to include him every time. The reason that he definitely is included every time is because of his of his 12 inch aura that increases the number of mortal wounds dealt with venom crusted weapons by one. So great model, great ability, super useful in our army. Great, great, great. Kragnos, the Ender of Empires, F tier, unplayable in this army. Kragnos is so many points that, uh, and he he does nothing that this army wants to do. He does nothing that this army wants to do. This army does not want to run forward and charge and smash in. It just doesn't. It wants to sit back. It wants to play tricks. It wants to be sneaky. It wants to divide and conquer. It wants to have good spells. It wants to shoot from, from afar. It wants to get lost in the mist. It, it's the opposite. Kragnos is the opposite of what this army wants to do, which is uh, unfortunate because he, uh, you know, these are Oryx. These are like the destruction um, monsters, which is, you know, where you'd think that Kragnos would belong. It's also funny to me that Kragnos also doesn't belong in Big Wa for similar reasons, because Big Wa wants to buy, buy their time and wait until those Wa points accumulate. But if you want to check out more about uh, Big Wa, you should check out my Big Wa video. All right, so that's it. So, I mean, if we're looking at the S tier, you know, Bull Boys and Swamp Call of Shamans could include multiple of those every time. Uh, Kill a Boss on Vulture and one of the Snatch Bosses could include that every single time. After that, Hobgrots are auto-include uh, just because they are battle line, and then it's either going to be a Nash Tooth or a Break a Boss or both. And then after that, right, Rogue Idol situational against Alpha Strike armies, a Kill a Boss depending on the meta. Uh, Merc Knob, if you're fighting against lots of spells that you want to try to mitigate against. Gobsprack, same kind of thing, right? If you wanted to upgrade a Vulture to a Gobsprack, um, that would be okay, but he loses some of his ability to move around uh, from mount traits, and he loses customizability with uh, hero traits. It's really too bad. It's also very, it reminds me very much of Gordrak and uh, uh, Mega Boss on Maw Crusher. Right? It's like the Mega Boss of Maw Crusher is used way more often because he's customizable. You can sort of make the model what you want it to be as opposed to, you know, just uh, Gordrak being what he is. And it's the same problem with Gobsprack. It's too bad. C tier, Gut Rippers are bad, Manok is bad, and then Marsh, Crawlis, Logath, Killabo, and Kragnos are all completely unplayable this army. So, uh, if you, be sure to check out my other Cruel Boy videos if you're interested. I'm going to follow lots of content, do lots of interesting things, hopefully. So like, subscribe, wah.